Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'll dedicate this week for headphone listening and the first in line is this little fellow right here which is called Hybe R6 Mark III which rocks the newest Android operating system. Its headphone amplifier works in either class A or class AB operation which is pretty cool and it goes for $4.99 US dollars but please don't mistake its low price with low performance because that is not going to happen. <music> Design-wise, I really like that uh, Hybe, Hybe, I don't know how to pronounce this word, but let's go with Hybe. Uh, they are sticking with the good old design language of their RS6, R5 Generation 2, because this one looks uh, pretty much the same. It has a fully CNC machined aluminum case. It has tempered glass on its back and on its front for better wireless connections, be it Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It has a metallic wheel which sits at the same level with its body so you won't accidentally turn it up or down in your pocket. They went with a 5 inch 720p display which is quite bright and colorful but please don't expect OLED levels of contrast or super high brightness levels as that is not going to happen. For light web browsing and for music streaming it should be more than enough but I won't use it for light gaming on the go although you can do that if you please. You'll find buttons only on its right side, a micro SD card slot on its left side, and all the connections were moved on the bottom. Rocking dedicated line out and headphone outputs coming in single ended and 4.4 mm balanced flavors. Checking out its specs, I was surprised to find an unlocked version of Android 12.0, uh, which is up from version 9 on RS6 and version 8 on R5 generation 2, putting it in line with modern smartphones. 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of ROM memory are present, which makes multitasking a breeze, and there's enough room for plenty of apps, even for a few lossless albums. They went with a Snapdragon 665 CPU, which might sound like an outdated CPU for modern smartphones, but in the world of digital audio players, this is actually right now the fastest, in line with some high-end and super high-end digital audio players. When it comes to sound, it rocks to ES9038 Q2A mobile chips, which will be decoding those zeros and ones into analog signals, followed by two OPA op amps and 16 transistors, which can work in either class A or class AB operation, which are providing about 400 milliwatts of power on its balanced output and 125 milliwatts of power on its single-ended output, which should be plenty enough even for some demanding loads as desktop headphones. It will play music for up to 9 hours on its regular jack in class A operation and up to 15 hours in class AB operation and a bit less on its balanced outputs. It does MQA, it has dedicated femtosecond clocks, it has dual-band Wi-Fi and supports the coolest Bluetooth codecs, both as a sender and as a receiver. Everything else can be checked on Hybe's website and I believe is the right time for some listening impressions. There is one thing which I really like about hybrid devices, something that I didn't saw on competitor digital audio players, and those are audio plugins and sound enhancements, which are working on a hardware level directly with the DAC chips. You can mostly find an EQ and maybe some digital filters on competitor digital audio players, on Fire devices, on Shining, on many others, but here you'll find a lot more, starting with a soundstage enhancer. You can tune its tonality, leaning over warmth or brightness, you can add texture and thickness to the bass, you can bring voices closer to you or you can make them deeper sounding, you can adjust its impulse response, which will make it faster or slower sounding depending on your taste, and many other additional tweaks which can make it your own. A deeply customized R6 would sound so so different to a stock one that I decided to review it in stock form and then later on I could tell you what you can improve with some IMs and headphones. This one is also by a 50 US dollars more expensive compared to R5 generation 2 which I reviewed not too long ago. 
Uh, this one moves way, way faster. It has a much newer CPU and double the RAM memory. So, of course, multitasking is much better on this one. It sounds clearer, it sounds airier, it sounds uh, more transparent, more technical, and the soundstage is bigger as well. R5 Generation 2, to me, was quite warm sounding, but very dynamic, very impactful sounding, uh, at the cost of a less impressive uh, detail retrieval. Something that I never felt on this one. So this one is more technical, it's more linear, more neutral by comparison. It's not limiting the frequency response in any way, and it feels like a natural follow-up to that R5 Generation 2. So this one sounds more like a modern uh, DAC or no digital tonal converter that is not trying to hide the truth from you. So it's uh, much more technical in a way. In all honesty, it sounds uh, clean, transparent, but a little boring in Class AB operation, especially without any sound enhancements and especially with some ultra-linear IMs like Fire FH9, like Hyperman Swanar, but after toning down that sibilance control and after adding some note thickness in the bass and mid-range, I could finally see the beauty behind these IMs, and I could finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. After I engaged its Class A working mode, I didn't feel a major difference uh, in between Class A and Class AB with ultra-sensitive IMs, I tried some reference recordings, you know, jazz, blues, and there wasn't really a big difference. Maybe the sub bass was a little jumpier, but uh, that was basically all. But when I moved to desktop headphones, and more exactly to planar magnetic headphones, then there was quite a big change. Uh, making them livelier, punchier sounding, there was more oomph, more rumble in the bass, sub bass extension was uh, clearly better, and there was less ringing in the upper treble. So it made them punchier, livelier, and more natural sounding in a way. Honestly, I didn't enjoy this one as much in class AB operation with desktop headphones. That made them quite uh, polite, ethereal, and quite gentle sounding. The only drawback of using its Class A working mode in conjunction with balanced outputs is battery life, because with these two headphones at around 70, 75 out of 100 volume wise, I was getting 5 hours and 30 minutes, which is not that much, so please take that into consideration. A few years ago, the noise floor was actually one of the most interesting topics. Uh, because only very few units could provide you a very low noise floor, and usually those were costing uh, a lot. But nowadays, that is no longer a problem, and you no longer need to spend a fortune, and this guy right here is actually a testament to that. Uh, their Air 5 Generation 2 offered a noise floor of 4 microvolts on its balanced outputs, and this one goes even lower at 3.5 microvolts of noise and 2 microvolts of noise on its single-ended output. But in real-life scenarios, I couldn't detect really a difference between both headphone jacks. It was really dead silent, even going super, super loud with ultra-sensitive IMs like Fire FH9, FA9, Hyperman Svanar, I could go super loud and still the background would be super dark. So in reality, this is a very IM-friendly digital audio player, and that makes me actually quite happy about this one. When it comes to power, it will work great with IMs on both its headphone jacks, uh, regardless of the gain and Class A or Class AB working mode, uh, but with desktop headphones there was a much bigger difference because they demanded only balanced connection, high gain, and Class A working mode for the best results. The hardest to drive IMs that I have in my possession are Hyperman Svanar, and 7 Hz timeless planar IMs, uh, which work great even on its single-ended output, mid-gain, uh, class A, B operation. But honestly, those sound enhancements, those made a major difference, uh, making them from good to great sounding. I especially like uh, toning down that sibilance control and adding some impulse response, adding some note thickness, uh, which made them much better sounding. With desktop headphones, uh, these worked at around 70, maybe 75 out of 100 volume-wise on high gain, balanced connection. Class A made a major difference, but sound enhancements as well. I think that it has enough power on top, regardless if you are using IMs or desktop headphones. And I would uh, care a lot more about those uh, sound enhancements, which made it great sounding in the first place. 
The only thing I can complain about this one without engaging that class A working mode would be transit response or how fast and impactful it sounds. It was polite sounding in the sub bass, it was lightweight sounding in the mid range, uh, it didn't have a lot of substance, it didn't have a lot of meat on the bone, although it was actually accelerating very fast as most ESC designs are doing. After some burning, it gained some substance and that class A working mode added some energy, of course, uh, but still, regardless of those settings, uh, that Mjolnir hammer won't smite you with the full force. So it didn't feel really explosive sounding with uh, rock and electronic tunes. For that, you'll need to invest into a much uh, pricier and more powerful digital audio player. Snare drum hits didn't have the energy that I wanted and uh, bass guitars didn't have the depth vibration and energy that I was chasing for. What felt as a ping pong game in terms of transients and dynamics felt as a wombo combo in terms of uh, transparency and detail retrieval. In much simple terms, regardless of my settings, game position, working mode, uh, headphone jacks, it was always trying to bring forward as much information as possible. And what I've heard on their R5 generation 2, with my eyes closed, I could hear on this one with my eyes open. Uh, because it was not trying to, you know, steal my attention with those small intricacies. I could hear them very easily. These ones are very detailed oriented. These are called Hyphomon Svenar, which are trying to mimic the sound of their Hyphomon Suzvara. And together with uh, this player right here, I've got as much information as I could possibly desire enough to impress a hardcore audiophile. And although you can do better than this, I don't believe you can do better at this price point. I find it slightly more detailed compared to, say, uh, Fire M11S, it's clearer compared to Shining M3 Ultra, and of course, it's slightly better than their Air 5 Generation 2. Moving on to soundstage, this is another area that felt marginally improved versus Air 5 Generation 2, but it was not really a massive difference. Still, I believe it's slightly airier, it's slightly more holographic compared to competitive dubs at the same price point of around 500 US dollars, especially on its balancer connection. Actually, if you look much closer at its specs, uh, more exactly at the channel crosstalk, you'll observe a massive difference. So it has a channel crosstalk of minus 68 dB on its single-ended output and minus 100 dB on its balancer connection. In much simple terms, it means that at a volume of 68 dB on its single-ended output, which, mind you, is not very loud, the left and right channel will uh, cross their paths, and of course that will seriously damage uh, the sound stage, the la layering, the air, everything will just crashing down on you. But you no longer have that issue on its balancer connection because 100 dB is very loud, and you can hear that everything is just more layered, better spread all around you, and it sounds just airier on its balancer connection. Moving on to frequency response, we are getting a fast, we are getting a clean and layered type of bass that is lacking some oomph and cojones in its stock form. Of course, with sound enhancements, you can make it thicker sounding, punchier sounding, livelier sounding the bass, so it's really up to you how you want that bass. Uh, but in the stock form, it will impress you more with its quality rather than with its quantity. Although, regardless of those settings, it will always be a clean, refined and layered type of bass. Its mid-range feels mostly linear with just a small pinch of naturalness. So it's not overly warm, it's not overly smooth, it's not elevated from linearity, but it's not dry or thin sounding either. So I wasn't the biggest fan of its mid-range in the stock form, but after some minor adjustments, I could finally enjoy those voices and just be carried away by music. If you want a slightly bolder bass and a fuller bodied mid-range, you can always engage that uh, Class A working mode, which will be giving you exactly that. As most ESS Saber designs, uh, its treble output is extended, it's excellent in here, so there is enough bite, there is enough uh, sparkle up top, uh, you can hear those notes past top octave, so it doesn't have a problem with the treble output. If you engage that class A, B working mode, then uh, some energy from bass and mid-range goes down, and you can feel that treble gets some momentum, but if you want to lower that energy, you can enable class A working mode, or just juggle with that EQ and sound enhancements, if you want to make it slightly more natural sounding. 
All in all, I find it quite linear sounding. It's more technical and it's more transparent sounding compared to the R5 Generation 2, RS2 and even compared to RS6. And that's a good thing as nobody wants four dubs which are sounding the same. Wrapping things up, the only drawback I see with this one is a mediocre battery life, getting somewhere in between five and six hours via its balanced output, high gain and class A, which is not that great. In spite of that, this is literally the fastest moving digital audio player and that Android 12 makes it so future-proof and so desirable. It works great with Bluetooth headphones, it works great via Wi-Fi with streaming services as Tidal and Kobus, and its very linear frequency response and neutral presentation works amazing as a good starting point for those audio enhancements. So you can make it slow, fast, mellow, impactful, exactly as you please. Just bend its tonality to your will and that is probably the strongest selling point of this unit. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as usual, listen to my tunes, be positive and I'll see you soon. Cheers!